first of all the characteristics of personal learning environments and then discuss what I believe are the different components that make up one's personal learning environment. So the first characteristic is that it's self-generated. It's what I believe is from a personal ground up. It's very intrinsically motivated form of learning as the learner decides who, what, where, how they're going to learn and then develop the process by which they're going to do so. It's fluid and moving. That means it's based on the learner's mood, needs, tools. It's always changing and it's and that's why uh, be, earlier in the show I showed you some static imagery and people's 2D diagrams of personal learning environments. I believe they're good for the time they've been developed and for the person they who developed them but I also believe that because we become more sophisticated as learners that it changes so often that a, a static diagram doesn't do it justice. So related to that, the fluidity is that it's changing and evolving and that as I become more sophisticated in the use of the tools, so does um, my personal learning environment. So I need a representation of my personal learning environment. When I think of it symbolically, it's got to be able to to take into account that it is evolving and it is fluid and that it does change based again on my, my needs and my sophistication with using the tools that are within the personal learning environment. So developing your PLE so this part I'm going to look at the different components and how they all fit together. The first part obviously is you are you as a professional <coughs> learner, excuse me, are the core, the center of the personal part. So it really takes a metacognitive analysis of understanding who you are. So directly related to that is how do you learn? And this is typically associated with learning style preferences. And in terms of using the <coughs> web tools, Associated with PLE, visuals may include the use of YouTube or um, Vimeo, other video. It may include imagery such as with, with Flickr. So those are the, what you seek out in terms of learning. The second one is the auditory and that's often associated with podcasts or listening to speakers on webinars. And then the third one is kinesthetic. And the closest right now, I think, is Second Life and Virtual Worlds. Which, which the tool selections, I look at those as the avenues. There are the main streets and thoroughways that get us to the, the learning we desire. That's, again, based on who we are as learners and then our learning style preferences. The t with whom? Who are your PLE co colleagues? It's been, I've just, that's a... A side result, I never expected that I'd actually get to know other professionals through my PLE and, and interact with them and talk to them through virtual means and never meet them face to face. What products, what do you get? Do you get ideas for your classroom? Do you get new ways, uh, new tools, technology tools to explore? Do you get new ways of thinking about Things such as PLEs. So what, what do you get from your involvement in your PLE? And then finally, what are the results? What are the outcomes? Uh, for me, uh, an unexpected outcome has been the social connections. I never expected that. So what else do you get? I have um, learned about things that I had seen art and heard music and found humor that I never expected. So what are the results? The opportunity to engage in PLEs has really enhanced my passion for learning. I love to learn and to, <clears throat> to be able to direct my learning with tools and, and um, the means that really meet my needs as a learner has been absolutely incredible and I'm so grateful.
to have had this opportunity in my lifetime. I am in Second Life. As I mentioned earlier, this is a major place, a major personal learning environment I use. I also mentioned earlier that the idea of using a 2D static representation of personal learning environments for me didn't reflect the core of what they're about. So I used, I, for the last part of the presentation, I want to show you this 3D representation of my personal learning environment and to give you ideas, possibly what yours, how you can conceptualize yours. So at the middle is the symbol of me and I chose the star just because I like the idea of the metaphor of the North Star providing direction in the personal learning environment provided me with a lot of direction. If I click, I could give you a note. And the note describes the note describes my PLE. This 3D wiki is a symbol of my personal learning environment. It demonstrates how one source leads to another and how they are all connected. Several of the nodes, when clicked, go to websites to give out some more information. Again, the reason for using Second Life in this particular tool are one, it demonstrates the 3D and full-bodied PLE experience, and two, it's not static, as are the 2D depictions. It permits adjustments as to the to the depiction as I make adjustments to my actual PLE. So this being the core, you can see that it leads off to lots of directions. The paths, the avenues, the tools that I describe, some of mine are Second Life, email listservs, RSS feeds, Twitter, and then those lead to further tools, blocks, for example, my calendar, which allows me to go to uh, webinars and Second Life events and blogs. I call it, I separated them into thought-provoking blogs and tech blogs and then leading to specific areas, NPR, technology. Same thing for Twitter. Twitter takes me to live webinars. I get I connect with people through Twitter and I actually put some people the connections I've made the human connections so it's very easy then I forgot my Digo so I can just add it representing again that it's fluid and evolving so I'm adding my Digo groups social bookmarking and there it is and then from there how quickly then I could make modifications and show the changes that are occurring so I hope you enjoyed the tour of my PLL PL experience that's repetitive my personal learning environment experiences and I hope to see you online